Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about Kaggle and why I think Kaggle is an excellent platform that you should definitely be making use of, especially if you're into ML or AI or data science or anything in that boat. In case you've never heard of Kaggle, first let me go ahead and explain what it is. Kaggle is a platform for essentially data science competitions where companies will come to Kaggle or maybe they go to them and they have some problem they need to be solved and they have some data they can use. So they give that data essentially to Kaggle who gives it out to anyone who's interested in participating and then participants can then use that data to solve the essentially the goal of whatever the specific competition is. They usually have multiple of these competitions running at once. Right now I think they have like five, six or seven of them, quite a bit running all the time. So there's always something different and new to try out, but that's essentially what it is. It's a competitive data science platform, I guess you could say, but with real projects. So throughout this video, I have six specific points I wanna share. And those are sort of reasons why I think you should definitely check out Kaggle if you haven't before, and you should definitely be using it to sort of hone your skills. Starting with reason number one, Kaggle has some really great projects in data with the, with a few exceptions, I guess. For the most part, Kaggle has really interesting competitions or the things that when I look at them, there's usually multiple that I am interested in. And I've definitely had to hold myself back in the past because I usually get super interested in too many things and my attention gets spread too thin. And I think that speaks volumes about the sort of quality, the bar, the quality bar that Kaggle keeps. So just to give a few examples of recent projects, there was one by Google where it was like identifying landmarks based on computer vision, these images, pretty neat. There was another one where CERN gave data on the someone, some of their particle colliders, I think, and you had to track particle positions given some data. Right now there's even one running for, I believe there's a satellite that checks for extraterrestrial signals. It's like to find aliens or I guess there's other things it could also track, right? There's all sorts of, you know, space phenomenons, but you know, they give you the data essentially just raw data, and they want you to parse through it and find something that they couldn't find before. So there's some really interesting projects and really cool data. And what's also really nice is because it's a platform that gives you the data, you don't have to go out and search for the data yourself. You can spend the majority of your time, after you know you do do a little data filtering and clean up, you can spend the majority of your time actually working on a model and an approach, which I think if you've ever worked as an ML engineer, you probably would realize that's quite different from how lots of jobs actually work. And in that sense, it's kind of nice. You get to work on a little bit more of the meaty and interesting part, which I think is definitely a plus. Number two is quite a sharp point, but just straight to it, you can win money. Winning money is always nice, and it is only the top few teams that can win these prizes, and sometimes they also have non-monetary prizes, but these prizes are fairly, fairly priced usually. They range anywhere from $10,000 to I think I've seen a grand pool of a million dollars for one of the data science bowls, if I'm not incorrect, which is pretty crazy. Now, you're probably not gonna win unless you really, really know what you're doing and you work long and hard on this, but the option is there. You know, you're not spending your time for no reward if that's really what you want to go for. Item number three, and I think this is the most important thing above anything else, is that Kaggle is a really great opportunity for you to see how other people in your field do things differently from you, how they do things better, where you're good at things, and you can essentially use Kaggle to pick up a lot of skills you might have not had prior or sort of fine tune the way you've done things by looking at other people's code. You might think that if you haven't gone to Kaggle before, oh, a, comp a competitive platform, surely you're not gonna learn from people that much, right? You're competing against each other. But surprisingly enough, Kaggle actually has a super helpful community and they post essentially kernels are what they're called and they're essentially code bits or these notebooks that people will share anything from data analysis to getting started with a project to their thoughts. They have all sorts of things and there's not just a few of them, there are a lot of these kernels and they are very high quality lots of the time. You would be surprised if you've never seen it before how high quality some of these are. You can tell these are made by definitely professionals in their fields. I myself have actually learned quite a bit from various kernels to different types of like NLP methods or ways I could process data better. There's all sorts of things you can learn. It's very much sort of the thing you would get if you were working in an office, maybe looking over uh, your senior or, or just some other coworker, sort of looking over their shoulder, seeing how they're doing things and maybe noticing things that you didn't know before. That's kind of what you can get on Kaggle, but you can do it online. And there are so many people giving so much quality code 
it's really incredible. And not only that, but once these competitions are over, people usually share the top results, sorry, not the top results, but the top solutions and how they did it in form posts that are very detailed. That's really incredible because it means you can see how the best person did. You can see what the top of the bar looks like. You can go through the code, learn from it. And it's, I think, and I really don't think there are many better places to learn about the best data science and machine learning principles than Kaggle, at least if you're trying to learn things in a practical sense. Item number four is something I just touched on a little bit, but I want to make this its own point because it's super true, and that is the Kaggle community is super helpful. Even though it's a competitive platform, people are constantly reaching out. If anyone asks a form question, people are always very fast to respond. It's not toxic at all. It's, it's super welcoming, even to beginners and advanced alike. So if you do want to get into Kaggle, that's definitely something you should look forward to, a very welcoming community that has a lot of knowledge and is always ready to help. And if you want, you can even find people to collaborate on projects with. I know when I was working on my last Kaggle project, people on the leaderboards tend to reach out to people around their area and see if they want to team up and combine methods. And that's another great way to learn from other people and also meet some people and have a good time while you're doing it. Item number five is that Kaggle is a great way to compare your skill set to other people's. Now, I think some people won't be super into this. Maybe I'm not sure if they're a little self-conscious or, or whatnot, but if you really do want to hone and refine your skills or gauge where you are, Kaggle is, I won't say a great way, but it's an okay way to do this. This point does come with a large caveat. And that is once you get into this sort of upper tier of Kaggle competitions, the top 5%, maybe even the top 10%, people are usually struggling over like 0.00001% accuracy or these ridiculously small intervals where honestly improvement doesn't really mean much. So if you get up to that point, it might not be a great way to essentially judge your skills, right? If you're like 5% versus in the 10th percent, um, that might not be a huge difference, but if you're participating in multiple competitions and you're constantly scoring in the bottom 50%, well, that is a way to know that maybe you have a ways to go and maybe you're missing something. And that would be a great opportunity for you to look at after that competition ends, maybe the first, second, third place solutions and see what you can learn from those. So item number six, and this is the final one, is that Kaggle is great job preparation if you're going into one of these machine learning data science, one of those sorts of fields. And I speak this from experience. When I got my first internship or first contract work actually, working as a machine learning engineer, I heavily used what I learned at Kaggle. Lots of the models that you use in Kaggle, you don't see in like all these research papers and stuff if you're on the research side of things because they're essentially, some of them are already figured out. One example of that is XG boosting or extreme gradient boosting. It's something that's used all the time in Kaggle, gets really great results, but I had never heard of it before I went to Kaggle because it's not something that is really talked about from my experience much in the research community, at least not in the subfields I work in. So Kaggle is really great job experience and hey, you know, it's also great to put on your resume if you get you know, fairly high up on the leaderboard. So that never hurts either. But anyway, those are all the points I wanted to bring out now. And that is why I think Kaggle is a great resource if you are working on machine learning or data science, or you wanna improve your skills or anything I mentioned, I definitely recommend giving Kaggle a try. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you enjoy this type of content, subscribing really means the world to me. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I do also hope to catch you next time.